In this video, I will demonstrate a practical timing technique for calculating travel speed. The technique works with any MIG, TIG, stick, flux core, or sub arc process. The technique can be used to time any positioner, turntable, turning rollers, seam welders, or weld arounds to achieve precise and consistent welds with good quality visual results. All with the simple use of a stopwatch. Stay tuned. So how to approach this timing technique? So by marking the pipe and the chuck with one inch increments, as you can see, the sub arc and two arrows are pointing at the start line. So by starting both the stopwatch and positioner in sync with one another, the stopwatch is marking time by inches per minute. So as both the pipe and chuck are turning relative to their diameter differences, the chuck is traveling at a higher rate of inches per minute than the pipe, which means that the chuck is covering more space and least amount of time. Now that the stopwatch is marking time, allow the stopwatch to reach the one minute mark. Stop the positioner at the one minute mark. The sub arc wire will mark your inches per minute. In this example, both the pipe and the chuck rotated one whole revolution with a couple of inches beyond the start line. This screenshot is displaying the stopwatch at zero, with both sub arc and arrows marking the start line. Also, both the pipe and the chuck circumference are being displayed at the top. Being displayed the one minute mark, with both sub arc and arrows marking the final one inch increments after the start line. At the top, you can see the final inches per minute. Here, what you do is add the circumference of the pipe and ending seven and a quarter inches marked by the sub arc and arrow after the start line with a result of 34 three eighths inches per minute. On this screenshot, the chuck circumference and ending have been formulated with a result of 63 inches per minute. Here's a different approach. Instead of marking one inch increments on the pipe, you can use a soft measuring tape to mark time in inches per minute. This timing technique is scale invariant, which can be used to mark time with any analog or digital controller. The technique transfers to any platform from a turntable to a positioner, from a turning roller to a weld around to a seam welder, all with the use of a stopwatch and a soft measuring tape, along with good weld parameters, wire feed speed, and calculated travel speed, the results will be consistent and high quality. Prepping for the route and multi-passes requires proper weld parameters, wire feed speed, and travel speed. The part has a 60 degree bevel with a knife edge butted together and 100% argon for backing gas for purging. You will need a TIG power source, cold wire feeder, and a positioner for this timing technique to be applied. A cold wire TIG process is being used for the root pass and seven filler passes in which the following segment I will complete the filler and cover passes with sub arc. With the use of good welding parameters, wire feed speed, along with travel speed, you can achieve and dictate a consistent weld size with penetration for the root and filler passes, along with a consistent visual result.
Here on display are some photos of the root reinforcement or penetration taken by a bore scope inspection camera. With the use of these key variables, you will achieve time and time and again these results. In this segment, the sub arc process will be used to complete the filler passes and cover pass for this demonstration. With the proper weld parameters, wire feed speed, and travel speed, the weld size and penetration will remain consistent along with a good electrical stick out and flux flow. Also the use of a handheld flux dam is being used to keep the weld puddle shielded at all times with flux. The sub arc is not positioned at the center of the diameter. It is slightly offset in front of the center. In this segment, the cover pass was layered with a travel speed that gave me a half inch weld size, in which the sub arc was traversed in half inch increments to achieve a good uniform cover pass. So this brings me to the conclusion of this video. This practical timing technique is scale invariant. It's a good pragmatic approach to achieve consistent and repetitive quality results regardless of skill level. Stay tuned for more videos about this topic.